This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. My name is Matthew Boynes, and go right ahead. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about turbocharging WP Query. Uh, and I'll, I'll get into exactly what that means in a minute. Uh, I work for Alley Interactive. We are a multi-platform development agency. About half of our business is WordPress, and we tend to build some pretty large sites. Uh, many of our large WordPress sites are hosted on WordPress.com VIP. We are one of their featured partners. So um, at Alley Interactive, I get to do a lot of really fun things. And, um, and because we, we build some of the largest WordPress websites there are, uh, we end up pushing WordPress to do things that it's never done before. Uh, which is um, which is a hoot, but it, it requires that you end up doing quite a bit of bushwhacking, and that's <laughs> that's what this uh, this story is about. Um, so, of all the things that I've I've done, uh, this is one that I've I've been probably the most excited about because um, it was one of the hardest things I've done. It's been one of the most rewarding. Uh, it's probably one of the most original, and if you ask me, it's one of the freaking coolest. So um, I figured it would, be, it would be good to do things a little bit in reverse and start with the results, kind of uh, whet the appetite a little bit. So you get an idea of what we're after, what we're, what we're going for uh, before I start going into details about it. So I have a um, very basic site here. It has uh, a lot of posts, about a half million. So this is just a, a site that I use to test uh, isolated code on uh, and know what it's going to, how it's going to behave in a large data set. Uh, this is running in a virtual machine. It's an Ubuntu virtual machine. It has a, a gig of dedicated RAM. And so it's not the most powerful machine, but uh, since I'm the only visitor, uh, it should be plenty for me. And uh, here I have two pages one just a regular WP query doing a very complex operation. It's uh, looking for posts within. Uh, any of three categories, uh, also in a tag that have a thumbnail, I think is, is what it is. So I'll click on a regular query to see how long this one takes. And it took 11.76 seconds. So not that impressive. That's regular WP query. And now I'm going to click on the turbocharged one, and that took 0.13 seconds. Uh, I'll click it again to make sure it's not a fluke, and it went down to 0.029 seconds. Uh, so uh, I forget exactly what it was, 11 something divided by, we'll call it 0.03, is 367 times faster. Uh, is your appetite wet now? Are you intrigued? Okay. Uh, I should probably put a, a footnote saying, you know, results are atypical or <laughs> uh, results may vary. What, um, what I've, I've done here is I found like a, a, a query that just was not working on a site and I've, I've worked out a way to um, really make it not a problem. The results are anywhere between uh, 20 times faster to yeah, 400 times faster. But the turbocharged WP query is really never more than a tenth of a second. So um, we've got some major improvement. Uh, all right, so that, that's the end. Uh, if anybody is not interested, then <laughs> feel free to leave because it's only going downhill from here. Uh, but we can, we'll, we'll go back to the beginning. Uh, I was working on a theme for a large news media company, and uh, it was going to be, or, or it is, a very important theme. It's used by many large news sites. Uh, pretty much for every news, for every major market in America, uh, at least one of the TV news sites will be using this theme. And these are news sites, so they're, they're quite large. Uh, post, post count range anywhere from um, tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands. And uh, there's one theme that's going to be powering all this, so uh, the theme needs to be really flexible. But not just typical flexibility of, 
like being able to customize the header and the background and the menu. Uh, we also need flexibility to do things like, uh, like featured stories or like uh, events that are happening. Uh, like, you know, one that's in the news right now, of course, is MH17. So you may have a, a region on the home page that's dedicated to articles about that. And to power that, you'd probably want to do a query that said, uh, give me all the, the new, all the posts within the category news that are tagged MH17. And maybe it's a list with thumbnails, so you want to make sure that those posts all have thumbnails. Now, that ends up being a very complex query, and if you have hundreds of thousands of posts in your site, uh, that can end up really slowing down your home page. And even just one page on your site, uh, if, it's, if it's not performing well, can, can trickle down to the rest of your, of your site. So um, in, order to, in order to accommodate these, um, th this abnormal aspect of flexibility, I built something called Query Builder, which if I have time at the end, uh, I should probably know. What time am I supposed to stop? Does anybody know? Well, we'll figure it out. Uh, so I, I built a UI for, for WP Query, and it allows, um, it allows these new sites to control these really complex regions of their site and define whatever, whatever criteria they need to, um, to, to power that area. And these, these Query Builder queries, has it, uh, anyone here used Zoninator? Anyone familiar with Zoninator? Yeah, I love Zoninator. Think of, think of Query Builder as Zoninator, but whereas uh, Zoninator is a plugin that allows you to manually curate posts, uh, Query Builder is a plugin that allows you to automatically curate posts. Uh, this, unfortunately, is not open source right now. Hopefully, it will be at some point, but that's kind of up to the client. So anyway, I, um, I finished this plugin. I was very proud of it. It was super cool. I submitted it to uh, VIP for their review. And it was rejected. <laughs> um, if you're not familiar with WordPress.com VIP, they review uh, all the code that runs on their system. So when you build a site, you submit the theme for review, and human eyes go over every single line and make sure that everything uh, is secure and performant, and that you're using all core functions properly. And they also look to make sure that there's not a better way to do something. And they try to think of edge cases. Uh, it's part of their... Um, well, their service is, is pretty pricey. I mean, it depends on what your needs are, but it's part of what you get for that price. Uh, so they looked this over, and they said, and I, I do give them credit for this quite rightfully, no way, we're not, we're, you're not going to be able to do this. Uh, why was it rejected? Because when they look for non-performant code, one of the things that they go through is every instance of WP Query that you're calling, making sure that essentially you're not doing anything stupid, that you're not making any really complex queries, uh, making sure that there's no more efficient way to do something. And what I went and did is created a tool that lets my client do whatever they want with WP Query. And they, they were not psyched about that. Uh, so I, I expected this. This was sort of a... Uh, first draft, but I wanted to get it in their hands so we could uh, so we could talk about open the discussion about um, about how to give my client the flexibility that they need without the risk of, of performance issues. Yeah. You got until 7.5, oh, thank you. Uh, so I I talked this out with them, and basically they gave me a hard no. They dug their heels in and they said, "No, there's no there's really no limits that we can put on." How many, tax, how many taxonomy terms they'd be able to add to this, or how many meta queries, or, or whatever. They said, this is just, we need to be able to review every query, and this isn't going to work for us. So I, I sat back, and um, with an air of disappointment, I said, okay, well, what are, what are my fundamental needs for my client, and uh, what's standing in the way of those needs? So my fundamental need is flexibility. And what's standing in my way the most is WordPress's data schema and the way MySQL has to work with that. The problem is that these are conflicting issues. Uh, I need flexibility, and WordPress's data schema, data schema provides that. Uh, for instance, the post meta table, those key value pairs mean that whenever we want to add a new custom field to an object, we don't have to modify the data schema. That is beautiful flexibility, and that is part of why WordPress has grown the way it does. Uh, it's it's it allows us to pretty much solve any problem that we need to without making modifications to, to the underlying data structure. So uh, I, this isn't exactly 
uncharted territory. Uh, this is not a 100% unprecedented event. WordPress has another area of its code base that is, for all intents and purposes, hot swappable, and that is the object cache. So the object cache, if you're not familiar with it, um, controls a few things. It controls um, smaller areas of cache on your site. It controls it controls uh, transients and it controls options. Basically, what it what it does is out of the box. It's a PHP class that that exists so that if you look something up in the database that's, like, say, an option, it stores it in memory so that you don't have to look it up again in the database. Uh, this, ob by default, this object storage is not persistent, but you can put in your own object cache and make it persistent. You can use some other outside data source. Uh, the most common one is memcache. Uh, I've also used Redis for this. And um, ultimately what we're doing is we're taking... So the, the data is really stored in MySQL, but we're using another data engine to drive it. And so uh, I was thinking that we could probably try to do the same thing in this instance. So swap out MySQL for some other technology. Uh, there are, you know, there's a flavor of every week. We could try Mongo, CouchDB. What, I'm, what I was really struggling with, what the real problem with WP Query was, is searching. Searching for posts using complex criteria. Still fixed criteria, fixed uh, search fields, um, but, uh, but still searching. We want to find posts that are in the news category that are tagged X, that are by authors A, B, or C that have a thumbnail. These are all search fields, if you think about it. Uh, you can compare it to searching kayak for a flight. You're not just saying, I want to fly from San Francisco to Boston, or Boston to San Francisco. You want to say, I want to fly on August 1st. I want a nonstop flight, obviously. Uh, you want to fly either JetBlue or American or Delta. That's where you have your miles. You want to arrive by 11 a.m. You have all this criteria, and these are individual search fields. So we want to do something like that. Um, so we want a search engine. And there are a few examples out there. There's Elasticsearch, Solar, Sphinx. Uh, Amazon has one in their um, web services repertoire. So I chose Elasticsearch. If you're not familiar with Elasticsearch, um, it is software that's essentially built for search. I wrote down what Elasticsearch calls themselves because it's, it's great. They, they say that they're a flexible and powerful open source distributed real-time search and analytics engine. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, what Elasticsearch does is it takes data it analyzes it, breaks it down into what, it call, what they call tokens, and then it indexes those tokens to make direct comparisons against later. Uh, so what does this mean? It means that if you have a word like WordPress, in MySQL, if you were to do a search, if somebody on your site did a search for WordPress, they might type it in exactly like that, or they might type it in all lowercase, or they might type it in incorrectly with the lowercase p, they might make it two words. Uh, there are a lot of things they can do there. So when you search for it, you want to do like a wildcard search. And in MySQL, that's with using percents. And you'd probably want to do a wildcard search on Word and a wildcard search on press. And that requires a lot of effort. With Elasticsearch, all that effort happens up front. The word is analyzed, and you can choose how a word is analyzed, but how I would choose to analyze this is to break it up into WordPress and WordPress and to make it all lowercase. And then when somebody does a search, those same exact uh, analyses happen on whatever it is they're searching for. And so then you're able to make a direct comparison. You want to find <laughs> articles that have Word and Press. Like, there you go. You're not doing any wildcard searches. You're doing direct one-to-one, token-to-token -to -token comparisons. That's one of the reasons why it's really super fast. Uh, but of course, it's more than just keyword searching. It allows us to do uh, search, uh, more complicated search queries on specific fields using specific data types, which is ultimately what we're after here. Elasticsearch is built in Java, but you don't need to know anything about Java to use it. It has a JSON REST API, and that's the, the primary way to interact with it. Uh, and um, Pretty much any developer can read and, and work in JSON. It, it's pretty uh, simple and intuitive. Why did I choose Elasticsearch? Uh, <laughs> mainly because I'm familiar with it. I've been working with it uh, for about 18 months. Um, 
at Alley, we took on a client, Kaiser Family Foundation, kff.org, uh, and they needed a powerful search engine on their site. So we looked at different software options, and about that same time, uh, WordPress.com VIP was developing a search add-on to their service for their VIP clients, and KFF was going to be a VIP client, so it ended up working out fine. We said, all right, well, we'll just use that. That, that seems the most simple decisions made for us. Uh, so we, we started working with it, and I really grew to love it. It's a wonderful complement to MySQL. Uh, MySQL is a fantastic data storage engine, but it's not so great at searching. Elasticsearch is awesome at searching, but you know what? It's not a great data storage engine, even though it kind of can behave that way if you, if you want it to. Uh, so they really complement each other nicely. They don't actually work together. You have to do... The, you have to do the effort to kind of get them to talk and to get the data in both places. But once you have everything in place, uh, they work really nicely side by side. So how do we get Elasticsearch and WordPress running together? Uh, well, the VIP, uh, if you're a VIP client, you can use their search add-on. If you're not, there are a few uh, Elasticsearch plugins for WordPress. I wasn't too crazy about any of them because they were a little bit more complicated than I needed, so I created one called Search Press, which is pretty simple. It just indexes your data, it replaces the core search with Elasticsearch, and it provides an underlying architecture on which any developer can build on it to do pretty much whatever they need. And um, that's one of the things that I use to turbocharge WP Query. Uh, so as I've been developing SearchPress, it's under constant development, uh, I wanted to provide a simple, effective way to query data with SearchPress. I wanted to do something like WP Query, and at times I even considered doing a drop-in replacement for it. And uh, we, we bounced the idea around at Alley, and I was really opposed to it, um, because it just seemed like it was going to be too much of a headache, and um, using the arguments in WP Query was going to get in the way just a little bit too much. Uh, in the end, I, I conceded, and it was actually the, the query builder problem that, that got me to, to admit that that was probably, doing a drop-in replacement was a better way to go, um, because it's, it, it kind of follows WordPress's ethos of backwards compatibility, of supporting what's, what's currently there. Uh, I, could, I could create something that is, um, that is a bit more specialized to... Elasticsearch, and that removes all the deprecated arguments of WP Query, uh, and removes all the things that would be really hard to do. But at the end of the day, that's that's kind of uh, crying uncle. That's that's admitting that I can't make this work with that. Whereas if I could make it work as a drop-in replacement, it would be so much better because it would be so much more useful. So I conceded and started working on this, this transplant. Uh, I started with unit tests, and guess what? I didn't have to write any, because Core has all these unit tests for WP Query, and if I'm building a drop-in replacement, then all those same unit tests should work, right? If, as long as I've done everything correctly. So I just had to go through Core's unit tests, pull out all the ones that use WP Query, pile them into my plugin, and I had a full test suite ready to go. I mean, they all failed because I hadn't done any work yet, but uh, they were all waiting for me to start building the features. What is core? Uh, just WordPress. WordPress's core code base. Uh, so as I was working on this, this transplant, um, my, my first thought was that I would hit Elasticsearch, come back with all the data that I need to create a WP post object, and then uh, return that to the user, just like WP Query would. The problem is that Elasticsearch doesn't store data the same way that MySQL does, and so that ended up being really hard to do. So what I decided to do was make Elasticsearch supplemental and keep MySQL as the canonical source for the data. Uh, what does that mean? It means that I did all the heavy lifting with Elasticsearch. I said I want all the posts in these categories with these tags and blah, 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 but only give me back the post IDs. And then I take the post IDs and I ask MySQL for all the rest of the data. And so now you're thinking, well, now you're hitting both endpoints. Isn't that double the work? Well, it turns out that asking MySQL for posts, even if you have like 20 million posts, but if you're asking MySQL for posts by the post ID, by its primary key, that's always going to be really fast. 
And if we're doing all the heavy lifting on the rest of the query with Elasticsearch, again, they work together beautifully. So MySQL is still our, our primary source for the data, uh, but Elasticsearch is just helping it out. I started off by building a replacement class. I just called ESWP query. And so if I wanted to run a query with Elasticsearch instead of MySQL, I would instanti instantiate this class instead of WP query. Uh, that ended up working out really well, but it wasn't part of my dream. My dream was to be able to have an argument in WP query where I just say, run this through Elasticsearch. Or actually, the second part of that dream was to say, do this with Elasticsearch if Elasticsearch is going to be the better option for it. Because if we're hitting MySQL anyway, well, what if, what if my query is just asking for a bunch of post IDs? Then I actually am doing double the work. Or what if I'm doing something that really isn't a complex operation? What if I'm saying, get me the 10 most recent post IDs with this parent? Uh, that's going to actually still be faster with MySQL. So the dream was to have some sort of an automated replacement process where there's logic in ESWP query, where, where it can make an educated guess if a query is going to be faster with Elasticsearch or if it's going to be faster with MySQL, uh, erring on the side of Elasticsearch if, if it's kind of a coin toss. Well, it turns out that's been, um, that's been really hard to do. It's kind of still in development. I do have the Elasticsearch argument working, but one of the main issues that I've, I've, I've come up against is that um, WP query is riddled with filters so people can modify the query. And if they've leveraged any of these, well, then it's just going to break the whole thing because the end result SQL query it does not match up to the arguments that were passed to that query. So it's, um, I'm not sold on this yet, but, but my dream is still alive and I'm, you know, I'm working toward it. So, uh, of course, I've had some challenges along the way. Uh, one of the, the biggest ones is that um, there's no standard Elasticsearch library. There's no standard for how WordPress data should be indexed in Elasticsearch. And um, I, I'm not a capitalist. So even though I have a, a, an Elasticsearch plugin, I don't want this plugin to require my other plugin. I want it to work with anybody's Elasticsearch plugin. And so I wanted the flexibility to uh, be able to define how, how your data is mapped in your Elasticsearch index and how we can use it in this plugin. Uh, so that's been pretty hard to, to work around, but um, I, think, I think in that case the, the end result has really been worth it. Um, one of the other challenges is that I've had to remap Elasticsearch or the way that I was indexing data with SearchPress a number of times. Uh, for example, adding date tokens. So uh, with WP Query, you can find posts by uh, components of a date. You can say, give me all the posts where the year value of the post date is 2014. Uh, you can also do really ridiculous things like, give me all the posts where the second value of the post date is 17. Like, I want to know what posts I publish on the 17th second of any minute. Um, so you can't do either of these things, actually, with Elasticsearch, because Elasticsearch is essentially indexing static data. I mean, I, I, I can add a footnote to that saying that you probably could, because with Elasticsearch you can query with a script, but now you're doing operations on the data. It's going to be slower, and we don't want to slow anything down. We want this to be lightning fast. So uh, what I ended up doing was taking the date field and manually tokenizing it as I was indexing it. So there's, uh, when I query Elasticsearch, I can query by the date, or I can query by date.year, date.month, date.day, date.day of week, all of those date components that I'm actually generating when I'm indexing the data. And um, so it's just sitting there static, and it does use a little bit more storage, but even if I have like a million posts in the table, we're only talking like, eight megabytes of extra storage. It's, it's really peanuts. Uh, and in the end, it allows us to make, um, make or, or perform operations on date fields very quickly, actually. Um, so I worked with Automatic on, uh, on getting them to update their Elasticsearch index uh, mapping as well. And so the VIP plugin also has roughly the same mapping as, as my search press plugin does. Uh, so we, we were both able to grow for that, um, grow with that. It's, it's definitely been for the better. Um, so as I've come through sort of the other end, 
uh, some limitations and considerations have certainly come up. First of all, no matter how hard I try, not everything works. Uh, there are some things that just cannot be done with Elasticsearch, at least not efficiently. Uh, a, a perfect, for instance, is with WP Query, you can search by a post parent. But you can say, give me all the posts where the post parent is uh, ID 3, 10, or 5. And when you order the results, I want them in that order. I want the parents in order of 3, 10, 5. Well, that's just something you can't do with Elasticsearch. It's, that's not the way that it's built. Uh, so basically, the only way that I'd be able to do that is to get all the posts uh, when, I, when I do a query and then order them manually using those fields. And let's say that there are 5,000 posts that return on that result. That's going to eat up way too much memory. It's going to be slow. It's counterintuitive to, to what, we're, what our end game is here. So um, no matter how hard I try, I, I just don't think I'm, I'm ever going to be able to get everything 100% working. But the vast majority of it uh, does work and, and works really well. Uh, another significant consideration is that the bigger the data, the better the results. Uh, small data sets may not have a significant enough difference to really warrant doing this because MySQL may just be fast enough out of the box. If, uh, if the uh, query that it performs, if it has to create a temporary table and that doesn't eat up too much memory, then it's able to just do a lot of brute force work in memory, uh, it'll end up being faster than having to make an extra call to Elasticsearch. So even though the times that we're talking about are really small, like with Elasticsearch it may take 0.09 seconds and MySQL at 0.06 seconds, uh, you know, it's, it's important to, to count those pennies because they can, they can certainly add up. Uh, the, probably the, the most significant limitation is that at the end of the day you have to maintain another service. This is the same consideration as if you're going to replace your object store with memcache. Uh, in addition to keeping MySQL running and maintaining that service, you also have to keep memcache running. And you have to keep it up to date if there are any security patches and so on and so forth. There's one more service that you need to keep running. You need to make sure its, uh, it's software is up to date and um, you got to make sure that you have enough horsepower to run it. Uh, so it's certainly not going to be uh, appropriate for every size site. Uh, so how does this whole thing even apply to smaller sites? Uh, first of all, as a proof of concept, what I was able to do is take a really significant piece of WordPress's code, a fundamental piece of its operation, and replace its underlying engine. That's a, a pretty cool proof of concept, and I think it leaves uh, a lot of room to, um, to take it just a few steps further, and, and I'll talk about that in a second. And another way that this applies to smaller sites is that if you're using Jetpack on your WordPress site, Jetpack now is using Elasticsearch. Uh, if you use their related posts feature, their related posts is being driven by Elasticsearch. That is the type of, of operation that even on a small site is just extremely difficult and inefficient to do with MySQL. Uh, so if Jetpack is, is maintaining an Elasticsearch index of um, all the sites that are using Jetpack, they're I, I, I'm just guessing that they're prob they probably have more things planned than just related posts. I think they'll probably end up doing more with it. And as they do more and more with Elasticsearch, I think that uh, this is one of the, the areas where they could probably uh, take advantage of the data source that they have to provide every WordPress site just a, a little bit better service. And uh, in conclusion and upon reflection, uh, is it unreasonable to have multiple storage engines uh, to maintain a copy of your data in MySQL and in Elasticsearch and in Memcache? Uh, I would say no. I think that um, each of these services has, has their strengths and have their weaknesses, and I think that uh, it's important to focus on the strengths of each and to leverage them as much as you can. Because not, there's not ever going to be one service that does everything perfectly. Uh, you know, the duck boat is, is not a good boat, and it's not a good car. Uh, if you have a car and a boat, you're going to do much better, uh, although the duck boat is fun to, to ride around in. So uh, where does this leave us in the future? What, um, what implications are here? We might maybe at some point uh, have a database agnostic WP query. Maybe WP query becomes deprecated and, and it gets replaced by another class which doesn't have MySQL specific operations and 
and it'll be a little bit easier to hot swap the data source just like you can the, the object cache. Uh, and finally, adding Elasticsearch as a data layer could certainly open up new doors for WordPress in the data world. And again, I think that's probably what the Jetpack team is after with, the, with uh, indexing posts and doing the, uh, the related post work. Uh, another, for instance, is user preference data mining, um, like recommendations. WordPress is, is being used for uh, a, a number of things, and one of those is, is e-commerce. And if you have a really good recommendation engine, those are, those are dollars in your, park, in your pocket. Uh, Add-on sales can really set a, a store apart from being mildly successful to super successful. So uh, that's all I have. If you're interested in trying any of this out, it's on our uh, GitHub account. It's github.com slash allyinteractive slash ESWP query. Uh, if you need something to index data in Elasticsearch, you can try out SearchPress. Uh, ESWP Query has instructions for how to use it with SearchPress or how to use it with um, another plugin. You can uh, set it up yourself. And uh, if you are really interested in this and want to do cool stuff like this, Alley Interactive is always hiring. Send us your code, info at alleyinteractive.com. It's a pretty fun place to work. You can work anywhere you want as long as you have an internet connection. And um, uh, that's, uh, I guess, about it. So, does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Uh, I have questions. So you just mentioned that you like to store query. Actually, when you want to build the index, you must do something related to the uh, save or update of the uh, WordPress uh, core APIs. For example, when I save and update new uh, post, right? I, I must update the index. Yes, correct. So that's what your, your whatever Elasticsearch plugin you're using has to do that. Yeah. That's what SearchPress does. Uh, that's what uh, VIP's Elasticsearch plugin does. And that's what all the other Elasticsearch plugins ultimately do. Whenever you create a new post or yeah. update a post or delete a post, it updates that Elasticsearch I index. I, I, will, I will call that API. Yeah, well, it does it automatically. but. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, so if you're using some external source to update the WordPress database, then uh, yeah, there's an API with, um, you can either, you could just send the data directly to Elasticsearch and bypass WordPress in that whole process. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, there was another question. Yes. I don't know, maybe in the future people will need to use Google Search on their sites Yeah, absolutely. And sorry, I should have repeated that question. Uh, I'll repeat it. Um, what he's saying is that uh, in the future, this may uh, may take away that need to use Google Custom Search in your site. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you use SearchPress, that is um, just basically activate it, let it index your posts, and then uh, yeah, your your search engine is going to be. I mean, I, I won't say that it's as good as Google's in terms of its like underlying algorithm. But it does have a really powerful um, out-of-the-box relevancy scoring, and it has access to to data about posts that Google wouldn't have access to. So, depending on how you're using it, it actually could be better, could significantly be better, better than Google. You could allow people to search and find things on your site that Google has not indexed. Right. Absolutely. That's a big difference. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because you could have data behind the scenes, like keywords that are just in no way public. Google would never be able to index them unless you're using their API to tell them that the post is. On that subject, that brings up something good. Could could you add misspellings the way Google does? Yep, so yeah. But that's not there yet? Uh, well, in my plugin, um, I created a pull request to do it, and I just haven't merged it yet. I just sort of set it aside because I wasn't 100% done with it, and I haven't finished the unit test for it. Um, but Elasticsearch has underlying support for spelling suggestions, yeah. It's on, it's on the roadmap. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's one of those, um, when, when we stop getting client work, then I'll be able to do it. <laughs> My first world problems. Never. <laughs> uh, I think I saw another hand somewhere. Yeah? All right. Well, uh, thank you all very much. If you have any more questions, find me out.